How come we have never heard about this place? If you're looking for a unique travel destination that offers stunning landscapes, cool artwork, and an active volcano, look no further than Lanzarote. Hi guys, I'm Paul. And I'm Bea, and this is Everything is Bofo. This beautiful Canary Island located off of the coast of Africa is like an alien planet. It's nothing like any place that we've ever seen before. In this video, let's see if we could create a travel guide out of our experiences we will take you with us as we journey through Lanzarote. We'll share our activities and tips we've gathered. And of course, your favorite, the cost of travel. All this after the intro. So we arrived on a Saturday afternoon and we stayed at the Puerto del Carmen area, so this was close to the Playa Blanca beach. So this is a nice beach area because there's a strip of restaurants and cafes and bars that we could go to to sit and watch the sunset and relax. So that was our first day. Well, what was the first thing we did as soon as we got to uh, settled in our hotel and we went to uh, Puerto del Carmen? We went around and looked for Asian food. <laughs> <laughs> we happened upon Asian food. Oh, me, I was just excited because once we started walking around the area, I saw, I'm like, oh they, my gosh, there's Indian food here and there's Chinese food and all of the, the food that we, we were craving for. So it was perfect. We didn't really have a lot of plans with Lanzarote, so we just knew, we had booked ahead a tour, but other than that, we didn't know what to expect with the island. So Paul happened to find a market that was open on Sundays. So we made sure that we woke up early that Sunday, the next day, so that we could catch the bus to go to the TBC market. The Tegise Market, also known as the Mercado de Tegise or Tegise Sunday Market, is one of the oldest and most traditional markets in Lanzarote. Originally established in the 15th century, the Tegise Market served as a meeting place for farmers, traders, and craftsmen from all over the island. Today, the Tegise Market has become a major tourist attraction and beloved weekly event for locals. It takes place every Sunday filling the streets of Tegise with a wide array of stalls selling various products including handicrafts, clothing, souvenirs, fresh produce, and local delicacies. At first, it looked like it was just one strip of uh, flea market, so we thought that was it. And then it just kept going and going and going. So don't be fooled, it looks very tiny in the beginning, but it's not. So we spent a good maybe two or three hours around the Tegise market because it was just so huge. We didn't even get to see everything. I really enjoyed that uh, they have a craft fair. Like they actually support the small businesses that do the crafts for you. So we saw a lot of artisanal uh, goods that I feel like was just the, the only thing you could only find in Lanzarote. So we pretty much just tried to get as much as we can because you know Lanzarote is a little far from us. A lot of like black rocks like jewelry like bracelets and necklaces made out of volcanic rock so a lot of those going around. What's amazing about this area is well I think it's just the entirety of Lanzarote is that all of the homes and the buildings and the offices they're all just painted in white and it's just so beautiful just walking around even if there's like a lot of people there. It was just, uh, the sun was reflecting through the, the homes and it was just creating this really bright atmosphere, even though it was like extremely hot that day. It was just fun to, to look at. It was a very nice way to spend a Sunday morning, I thought. And the only thing though, I don't think there were any restrooms there. So we only used the restroom at the cafe because we ate there. I mean, if you have a euro, then you could use the restroom, but yeah, there's not 
a lot of restrooms. But we tried some local pastries and then we bought some handmade jewelry. What else? Oh, and some linen, linen shirts and oh, like a glass souvenir, which we have over here, which is cute, but I think it broke. <laughs> Okay, and then by Monday, we had a tour through Get Your Guide where it was a seven-hour tour. So it was essentially a whole-day tour and it started at around 9 a.m. The bus picked us up at the pickup point close to our hotel and then from there, we went first to the town of Yaiza, which is a smaller town. And it was like a, a rest, a stop point so that people can use the restroom because when we go to uh, the other the other parts of the tour, there's not uh, really a lot of restrooms. So we went to Yaiza and we walked around and it kind of like gave you a feel of what to expect when you go with the tour. Yaiza is a town that survived the volcanic eruption, the latest volcanic eruption, which is around 300 years ago. So it was one of the towns that was saved. So that was their claim to fame. After Yaiza, our next stop was El Golfo. El Golfo is a coastal village in the southwest of the island. It is famous for its unique landscape, featuring a volcanic crater with a striking green lagoon known as Lago Verde. The vibrant green of the lake is due to algae and minerals present in the waters. So we hiked up over, it's not very hard to hike up to it. I think it was maybe two minutes to get to the viewpoint where you see this green, very green lagoon right next to a beach on the other side. And I think they gave us about 25 minutes to survey the land, to explore. So we, the first thing we went to was the green lagoon and then we took photos there and I saw that you could go down to the beach with the black sand and I just tried to run as fast as I could just to be able to see and touch the sand and it was it was amazing it was great besides the green lake el golfo also offers beautiful black sand beaches and dramatic cliffs making it an ideal destination for a relaxing day by the sea the sand was really cold um, and the water was really clear so that was fun it was black yeah it was black right black, yeah. black sand. like black 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 volcanic rock sand i've never touched black sand before but wow, holy moly, so cool. The only thing was we, since we were on a time crunch, we weren't able to go around the El Golfo village because that was one of the highlights of uh, the city also because El Golfo also has this tiny village that has um, all white homes and then you can go through the alleys and just walk around and take photos. The village itself is small and charming with several seafood restaurants along the waterfront offering delicious local dishes. It was it was pretty worth it like seeing that green lagoon and seeing the water and the black sand that was cool. And then the highlight of the tour really is the Timanfaya National Park. Timanfaya National Park is a mesmerizing UNESCO biosphere reserve renowned for its extraordinary volcanic landscapes and geothermal activity, making it one of the most unique and striking places on the island. The park's terrain is dominated by impressive volcanic cones, lava fields, and multicolored craters creating an otherworldly and lunar-like atmosphere. This national park covers an area of approximately 51 square kilometers and is a captivating testament to Lanzarote's volcanic origin. So this one still has an active volcano as part of the tour. It really just transports you into a different world. Like you're, this is not something that you see at a regular national park. Right, the closer we got to these hills or these mountains the the more surreal it got because it just looked like a black hill and then there's a uh, red red flakes on top and it looks like a painting it's just so it's amazing so for us to be able to survey that area with the red tips the only way we could go around that area is 
through a camel experience, which we, of course, pretty much obliged. Of course, we did. We we had to do it. We we just had to do it. Of course, we want to ride a camel. The camel rides in Timon Faya National Park take place in a specific area called Echadero de los Camellos, which translates to Camel Corral. This designated area is where visitors can enjoy a unique experience of riding camels through the park's volcanic landscapes. These rides offer a fun and memorable way to explore a part of the park while enjoying the company of these gentle creatures. I mean, for me, I felt really bad riding these camels, but then as soon as as soon as soon the camel stood up, we got a girl camel and she was a little smaller than the others. As soon as she stood up, I knew that she was strong enough to handle the both of us with sandbag because she they had to put sandbag on her side too. To even us out. Yeah. You're so strong. Here we go. Here we go, Blanca. Oh, God. Her name was Blanca. She's really cute, very sweet. She didn't have an attitude like the other camels. There were some troublemakers in front of us. <laughs> some, right? Some naughty camels in front of us. But she was fine. They they had to use the camels because they didn't want to interrupt the ecosystem of the whole uh, area. So the only the camels could could walk around there and with the guides. So it was I don't know. Was it like a thirty minute camel ride? Well, yeah, or? twenty minute camel ride, and I think it is really well worth it. It's a lot of fun, and you get to see the sights. Personally, I don't think I really looked at the sights because I was having so much fun riding the camel. So that's all I did was take pictures of us riding the camel and everybody else riding the camel. But no regrets. Disclaimer, the camels are tied together so they are all walking in one line. Blanca is a very fast walker so she is pushing up to the camel in front of us. The camel in front of us would pee and poop. So <laughs> it was very close to to us <laughs> and I, my main concern was I was wearing white shoes <laughs> so I just didn't want my shoes to get dirty but yeah it was really close the good thing is the camels are well cared for and accustomed to carrying passengers providing a safe and enjoyable adventure for visitors keep in mind that the camel rides are typically operated by authorized tour companies and that they are subject to specific regulations to ensure the well-being of both the camels and the visitors. So it's advisable to join an organized tour and follow the guidance of the park staff to have a pleasant and responsible camel riding experience in Timanfaya National Park. So after the camel experience, we head on to the heart of, I think the heart of the tour, which is going into the Timanfaya National Park and going up to the El Diablo restaurant. I think it's the highest point um, of that tour, from what I remember. And if you don't know what El Diablo restaurant is famous for, they're actually famous for uh, cooking most of their dishes through the, the openings of the volcanoes. And they do uh, demonstrations of how hot these um, holes are. Holy crap, it's really warm. Oh, it's so hot. So there's a guy with a shovel that gives us a little bit of those tiny volcanic rocks to hold and they were hot. Like, hot. like hot, hot. They said like hold out both hands. He'll put it on one and so that you can like transfer, transfer. And yeah, it was hot. Whoa. Oh, oh, ah. <laughs> really hot, huh? Oh. Do we just throw it back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, oh god, <laughs> it hurts. And then they had us go walk up once one flight, and that is where they demonstrated the hay. They put like dried leaves and dried um, twigs, and then they put it in the hole, and then after a few minutes, it starts to burn. Yeah, be yeah. engulfed in flames. And then also, there's like one hole where they would pour a bucket of water and then it will be a geyser. Geyser. Is it geyser? Geyser. 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 
Let me know in the comments if it's geyser or gazer. And then afterwards, since uh, we were only there for the demonstration, we weren't really eating at the restaurant. Then there was like a an area where you can see like where they cook the meat and you could actually go in there and walk in there and see um, how how hot it is and what what the meat what the that's setup cooking. Is. Yeah, you can smell the meat that's cooking. So after El Diablo restaurant, then we hop on the bus and then we go through the actual lava fields. The volcanic eruptions that took place in the 18th century significantly shaped the park's landscape, leaving behind a rugged and dramatic scenery that continues to captivate visitors. The one thing about the lava fields is that you can't leave your vehicle because they're trying to preserve the area and you know they're trying to keep people safe as well. So you can only be in your car Due to the sensitive nature of the park's environment, visitors can explore Timan Faya only on guided tours, ensuring the preservation of its unique ecosystem. From what I've seen, it's only the buses that were going through these really, really narrow streets, and you can see like the the big caves that the the volcano has has made, the lava has made. Um, it was pretty wild just seeing just going through all of those things. These tours offer a chance to marvel at the volcanic wonders, learn about the geological history of the area, and experience the extraordinary forces of nature at work. Timan Faya National Park is a place of both scientific interest and sheer beauty, offering a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to witness the raw power and beauty of nature's volcanic creations. And the next up, it was lunchtime. So they took us to a buffet, which was quite reasonable. I think it was about just 10 euros and it had some vegetables. It had some, some food that was typical of Lanzarote. It even had like pitchers of wine. We didn't need that many pitchers of wine, but they had it. They thought we did. After lunch, there was like a church nearby that you could visit to kind of see. And there is also a cross and kind of a... Gosh, what do you it call was, it? It was kind of like a shrine. A shrine, yes. Where they were saying that that's where the lava stopped. Yes. And then that's how, that's why they put the cross on it. Right. Just to symbolize like, this, we stopped it. Yeah. Victory. So I think that, well, the next stop, which was the last stop? I think that was the right, last stop, yeah. Was what made the trip to Lanzarote worth it. Like, they, watch, seeing Timan Faya, for sure it was worth it, but going through this next stop, which was called the Lajeria Wine uh, Region, that was icing on the cake for me. The Lajeria Wine Region is a unique and picturesque wine growing area located in the central part of the island. It is renowned for its unconventional and innovative wine cultivation methods in a volcanic landscape. Once you enter that area, you can see uh, fields of these really tiny curved stone walls. Like craters. Craters, but then they kind of like have a wall walls. covering all these these uh, Green crops. Green plants. Yeah. The striking feature of Lajeria is its distinctive vineyards, which are individually enclosed by low semi-circular stone walls called thocos. These stone walls protect the vines from the strong wind and help to retain moisture in the volcanic soil, creating a microclimate that is ideal for grape cultivation. Due to the arid and volcanic nature of the soil, the vines are grown in small shallow holes known as hoyos. Each vine is planted separately, maximizing the absorption of dew and moisture from the air. So fascinating. How little water it needs to... We were able to also taste the wine 
It was, it's included in the tour. That was, that was pretty cool. The winemakers in Lajeria mainly grow the Malvasa grape variety, which is well suited to the unique volcanic soil and produces some excellent white wines. The wine produced in this region has a distinctive character with a pleasantly minerality and notes of volcanic terroir. Yeah, I think it's like not a vineyard that I've ever seen before. Yeah, it's so fascinating to see. Um, and I think it's one of the only ones in the world, if I'm not mistaken. Touring the La Heria wine region is a delightful experience, offering the chance to visit local wineries, taste the unique wines, and learn about the innovative cultivation techniques. Many wineries are open to the public for tasting tours, providing insights into the winemaking process and the history of winemaking on the island. Beyond the wine, the landscape itself is captivating, with the volcanic hills and vineyards creating a surreal and beautiful backdrop for wine enthusiasts and nature lovers alike. Cheers. So, it's beautiful. So what did we learn with our seven day stay in Lanzarote? Well, first of all, I think Lanzarote, well, we only did the southern part of the island. We didn't go to the northern part of the island because my idea was that we would just sit back, relax, stay by the pool and by the beach and that would be it. What we quickly realized was that we are not those types of people and we need to explore a little bit. So I think we should have maybe taken a ferry to a different island or maybe visited the north of the island or did another tour. But this was just like planned so, um, what is so last minute. Hastily. <laughs> so last minute that we didn't really research too much. So in hindsight, I wish that we had researched more and taken more tours because there, I think that there were more to see that we just didn't do. Especially if you are not renting a car, you should take tours so that you won't need to take a car because it's probably like an hour travel time going to the north or two hours. Um, parking might be hard, so uh, if you could take the tours, because what we've learned from the tours are we, we learn a lot from the tours, so that's what we've learned. You like, learn a lot from the area that you're in, especially if it's like the first time or you've never, like us, we never really researched about Lanzarote. Um, you learn a lot. And it about the history to... of the island and the history of the place, like how many volcanic eruptions it has had, all of that stuff. Yeah. And then also like if you're on a tour bus, so if you're going to Timanfaya National Park, with a car, you will have to fall in a very, 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 very long line to get into the park. The tour buses will have priority, so they do not need to go through that same line. They just go whiz past all of those cars. So I think there's like maximum capacity when it comes to, like for example, we went to El Diablo, the restaurant on top of Timanfaya, and there was a long line of cars. They were already in the, they already went through the security, but there was just a, a long line and our tour bus just bypassed it. They, yeah. they, they prioritized the tour buses. Yeah, and we were able to park right away. Yeah, so I would just take the tour for sure. Don't skip the camel ride. So this tour didn't offer the camel ride to everybody. It's optional, but I think it was just a lot more fun to ride the camel and explore a little bit of the area that not everybody could see. Also, it kind of like, I feel like if I didn't take the camel ride, it would kind of suck because we were waiting, they were waiting for us to finish our camel ride. So if I was the person that was just waiting for other people having fun, I'm kind of like, mm, kind of feel like I'm missing out. Yeah, I'd be so jealous. Food is expensive, but the portions are bigger. So we were surprised that some of like the meals would cost at starting at around 15 16 euros as opposed to here where it's about seven or eight euros but then what we also realized was that it's good to share for most of the things that we ordered we either had to just share it or we had enough to take home on the flip side alcohol is cheap um, you could actually get a pint of beer was it a pint or a mug a mug, a mug of beer for two euros at the most or maybe like 250 at the most 
and it's ice cold. I've never had beer like that. We live in Spain, just in case you don't know. Um, that's why it's expensive for us when we went. But um, the, I've never had ice cold beer like that, and it's great. It was just so I was just so surprised. Unless you want to like really really explore the islands, I don't think that you need to rent a car. Um, if you're just, I, I think joining tours would be enough. It's well connected with the public transportation system and they also have buses and taxis. On our way back to the airport, we didn't even have to call for a taxi. We just saw one, maybe because our area is also very like touristy, but we were able to flag one down in not even five minutes. So from what we've learned, you should visit during the shoulder seasons. And the shoulder seasons are spring, which is April to June, and autumn, which is September to November. Well, for a few factors, the weather is better because if you visit in the summer, it's just going to be um, really, really hot. There's going to be less crowds for sure, and it's going to be cheaper, just like when we, when we went. So, Paul, what have you learned about booking a hotel? Last minute. What I've learned <laughs> with booking a hotel last minute is make sure you check if there's AC because the hotel I booked didn't have an AC. And no fans either, so I had to ask the concierge for a fan. So we had to, good thing there's, there wasn't a lot of mosquitoes because we had to leave our windows open when we sleep. And good thing it wasn't summer because it would be wouldn't have helped so yeah make sure there's ac so now i always check usually i book the hotels if it's your first time in spain or you don't know how to speak spanish you have to know that in lanzarote english is widely spoken because this is popular with british tourists a lot of the restaurants and tour guides and hotels and bars and cafes a lot of them speak english and have english menus or i think there were a few there were a few options so i think there's english and dutch or in german i think and of course spanish well there's also live music which is in english so um, almost every other bar that you go through we were we were at puerto del carmen so Almost every other bar that we walked past had live music, so it was great. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Make sure that your shoes have a strong grip. So Lanzarote, especially where our hotel was, was on a very, very steep incline. So steep that every time we go down, we slip a little bit. Not enough to land on our butts, but enough for us to like get a bit of a jolt, right? Right. So make sure you have really nice shoes and, well, Make sure that you can walk up an incline because there's no other option other than stairs. Like sometimes it's just a hill going up, sometimes it's stairs, but you're still going up <laughs> nonetheless. It can get really windy in Lanzarote. So if you're visiting in the cooler months, prepare to bring a windbreaker or a light jacket, especially if you're going to do like some outdoor adventure. I know this gentleman who was on the plane beside me, he was doing caving or spelunking. So there are a ton of outdoor sports out there. We just are not outdoorsy enough to try them. Probably one of the experiences that I haven't experienced in years was uh, when we went to the Tegisa market, uh, we took the public bus and then on the way back, the bus was extremely full that we had to stand for 45 minutes, just like in the, in the, by the aisle. It was standing, standing room only. Yeah, so be prepared that there will be crowds on the way back from the market. And lastly, be aware of the layout of the airport when you are flying back out of Lanzarote. When we arrived, we couldn't find the entrance to the security gate because we didn't need boarding passes. We already had them on our phones and we weren't checking anything. We only brought backpacks, but we could not find the entrance. And I think they closed it off for some reason. It was off to the left side, but they closed it off. We couldn't get in through there. We had to go fall in line at our airline, the airline, the check-in counter of our airline, and they were the ones who ushered us through. 
So if you don't need to check in anything and you already have your boarding pass, be aware that you might still need to go through the check-in counter to get through security. There's a, like a bunch of tiny lines there that you can just go through because there's like no actual entrance. So first up were flights. So we flew with Vueling from Valencia to Lanzarote. It was a two hour flight. And did we sit together? Yes. Okay, so we even sat oh, together. No, we didn't I, choose a We were sitting aisle aisle. Really? Yeah. Okay. So we didn't sit together because we didn't pick our seats, which was fine. So we both got aisle seats. We were right next to each other with the aisle between us. And the cost for the flight was 81 euros and 96 cents for two people round trip with just our backpacks. For the hotels, I was looking for an area where, because they were saying the farther you are from the airport, the less activity activities there are. So I, I tried to look for a place where, you know, there's still nightlife, but also not too wild. <laughs> So I, the, the place we found was Puerto del Carmen and what I forgot to look for was um, the AC so I didn't find the AC because I immediately booked the hotel because it was I think it was like 428 euros for seven days nights? or seven nights? nights seven nights so it was pretty cheap so I just immediately booked it and then you know, it wasn't too bad not having AC, but you know, just pick the season, I guess. So the hotel that we stayed at was called Apartamentos Isla de Lobos. They, it was a gated, I wouldn't say a resort, but it was like a gated apartment complex that had a really nice pool. There was a bar there. There was a gentleman that was there every day where you could order food, you could order drinks. The hotel, the hotel reception area was open from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Anytime after that, you need to call them. The rooms itself, it was more of really a one bedroom apartment. So we had our own living room. We had a bathroom, a kitchen. We had all the utensils and plates and we had a fridge, a big fridge. So it didn't feel like we were cramped in a room for how many days? For seven days, for seven nights. Right. And then for that entire week, well, we sometimes we eat out, but then most of the time we just go to Mercadona, one of the grocery stores, and then we just buy food. Like either we reheat food or we just cook cook it ourselves. And having that stove and the big fridge really, really helped. It made up for it. Yeah, the only thing I didn't like, I don't think it was as clean as I wanted it to be. But I mean, with the price that we, the price point that we were, and with the amenities of the kitchen and the living room and the swimming pool, I thought it was a very good price. So for the food, she mentioned earlier that it was expensive, mainly because it's a huge portion. So if we were to estimate, like every time we went out. We probably spent like 35 to 45 euro, euros per per meal for the both of us. That includes drinks, dessert, and then the food. Yeah, that's our entire check. We really hope you enjoyed this list. If you have any questions, feel free to write them down in the comment section below. We'd love to hear what you would recommend. Yeah, what I, I'm sure we missed a lot. We were just too lazy to plan anything. So don't do what we did and join a few more tours because i feel like the island has a lot more to offer we just were too lazy to plan anything that day well at least it made a great video but thank you for watching thank you to everyone who writes us really nice comments thank you for everyone who bought us coffees over at our buy a coffee link um, to everyone who joined our facebook group so uh, I think it was a nice way to spend a Saturday morning. Sunday. No, oh, sorry, sorry. I thought it was a very nice day to. It was a very nice way to spend a Saturday morning. Sunday. Sunday morning. <laughs>